I am at the foot of Little Round Top, and I am going to read Texas, A Texan in Search of a Fight, by John Camden West of the 4th Texas. His account, July 3rd, July 2nd, 1863. It's cold. General Longstreet and Hood were opposed to attacking the enemy in a position of their own choosing. I'm unable without a map to describe the locality of the forces or the face of the country along the entire line, but can give you a faint idea along the affairs on the right wing. Hood's division occupied this, and our brigade was the last one on the extreme right of the division. The line must have been five or six miles long. We were put into the fight about three o'clock in the afternoon of the second, having marched all night on the first, and laid in line of battle all the morning of the second. And my first lesson as a recruit was to lie for about a half an hour under what most experienced soldiers called the worst shelling they had ever witnessed. Several were killed and many wounded in a few feet of me, and the infernal machines came tearing and whirring through the ranks with a most demoralizing tendency. This, however, was soon over. Our line was formed, and with a voice that Stenter might have envied, General Hood gave the command, Forward. Steady. Forward. He was on horseback, on the left of a line from our brigade to the battery plane upon us, and about 300 yards from me, and forward we went. The word passed down the line, quick, but not double quick. We moved as fast as we could. Off went blankets, knapsacks, and all surplus baggage, and yelling and screaming, we rushed on the batteries. On one of a lofty eminence beyond a rock fence in a small branch, the other back of it on quite a mountain about 300 yards farther and a little off to the right, we were a full three-quarters of a mile from us when the word forward was given. The result was the line became broken and confused and the men exhausted, having marched all of the previous night. By the time they reached the foot of the hill, nevertheless, the first battery was taken, and after rallying the best manner possible, several desperate efforts were made to charge the second. But courage and even desperation was useless. There were places full 10 or 15 feet perpendicular around which we were compelled to go, and the entire ascent would have been difficult to a man entirely divested of gun and accoutrements. It was a mass of rock and boulders amid which a mountain goat would have reveled and being subject to fire, on which the left flank made it a most dangerous and unsafe place for a soldier, and many fellow reminded me of the alliteration, round the rude rock the ragged rascal ran. Round the rude rock the ragged rascal ran. Our assault with short intervals was kept up until dark, when we rested on our arms and spent an uneasy night amidst the crags. Our position was now rather in advance of the troops on our left. All day the third we held our ground, making unsuccessful sallies, checking skirmishers, and passing shots with sharpshooters. One of whom, secret in a tree on the side of the mountain, put a bullet in an inch of my head as I leaned against the rock, part of the bullet flying into my lip. That was John Camden West of the 4th Texas in his account, A Texan in Search of a Fight, being the diary and letters of a private soldier in Hood's Texas Brigade, published in 1901. Thanks for watching.